All right, welcome back. Episode 182 of Chaotically Intolerant. Another big sports week, um, specifically Monday night. We have NHL, it, it's the Equinox. We have the World Series, NFL. Big, big day for sports. Um, we're going to talk a little World Series to start the show, and then we will dive into week eight and nine of the NFL. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's go. All right, Mike. So the LA Dodgers are somewhat on the brink. You got two games to win. Um, the Yankees are just not. They they just don't. They seem outmanned, in my opinion. Yeah. Yes. I wanted to point out. Unfortunately, there's no New York hockey teams playing tonight. Otherwise, you would have had the true sports equinox. Um, but the Knicks are playing. The Giants are playing. But unfortunately, none of the NHL teams. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, well, it really, it came down to game one and, um, unfortunately in a series, every game is a two game swing. And there were so many little things throughout the course of that game that a changed the outcome and B highlighted the Yankees deficiencies as to why I never truly believe they'd be a championship team. And I believe the only reason they got to the world series was the weakness of the American league. I don't think if you'd put them in the postseason field in the National League, they would have gotten past the Padres or the Mets, probably. Um, so the weakness is showing. The series isn't over, although it feels like it is. And the Dodgers, I mean, it's just, it, it's all come together for them. I mean, for all the talk about the pitching injuries, they have such a deep bullpen that they've been able to make up for that. And the lineup is healthy, right? That's the thing is that the they have so many big weapons. Um, you know, there was this scare for Otani, but it looks like he's going to play. Freeman's been playing through a hobbled ankle. Uh, it, there's no weak spot in that lineup. And in fact, the weakest hitter, quote unquote, arguably maybe the weakest hitter in the lineup was the one who started that 10th inning rally, which was Gavin Lux with a one-out walk. So that tells you the state of the Dodgers. I, I don't think the Yankees are coming back. I think the most the series is going is six, but I would not be shocked if it finishes out in the Bronx um, and it ain't going seven. I'll tell you that. And we've talked about maybe going seven, it, six max. Uh, and I think the Dodgers get it. I understand like the, the comparison to Gibby's walk off home run, you know, in what 88, right. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just not that much the same, right? Like I feel like when we do that, it would be like the exact same situation, same team, like the whole thing, but it's like, I don't know. They were playing the A's. It was Eck on the, on the mound, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't feel like the exact, exact same situation. I feel like the major league baseball is trying to push a little bit of a, a little bit of a narrative there, in my opinion. Well, there, this is what I've gotten kind of tired of seeing. And, and by the way, that was, I don't remember, it wasn't Dennis Eckersley Cy Young season, but he finished second that year in 88, whereas Nestor Cortez is a starter in the bullpen who hasn't pitched yeah. in a in over a month. Um, uh, I, I, I've kind of gotten tired of this whole, like they're almost trying to paint the Dodgers as some kind of underdog. You know, you talk about overcoming the injuries and, you know, Freddie dealing with the ankle and, and the comeback win. And it's like, you just got to tune all that out. I mean, this team yeah. is one of the most loaded teams we've seen maybe since the 98 Yankees, they have potential dynasty, written all over it. The the whole payroll thing, like, oh, their payroll actually was in, was behind the Yankees and Mets. Maybe that's because Shohei Otani has 68 million <laughs> deferred. You know, they're kind of yeah. beating the system now and, and trying to play it like, oh, we're not really that much of a, more of an evil empire than the Yankees or the Mets. I mean, it's, you know, come on. Anybody who watches baseball knows exactly what the score is here. They've got three former MVPs on the at the top of their roster. I don't want to hear about how they traded for Mookie Betts. He was going to be a free agent. Where do you think he was going? Um, they're all they all came from different places or different organizations, and um, it, it's you know it's just wild. And there's so many guys on the Dodgers roster. I find this fascinating. That you know, as a Red Sox fan, there's a lot of guys from the 18 Red Sox that have, are either on this year's roster or have been on previous year's rosters, like David Price, Craig Kimbrell, um, obviously Joe Kelly, Ryan Brazier, Mookie Betts. Freddie Freeman was with the Braves in 2021. <laughs> um, 
Daniel Hudson was with the Nats in 2019. They've also had Trey, Turn Trey Turner, Max Scherzer on the team. My point is there are so many players who have been part of championship teams that beat the Dodgers to win those championships. Jason Hayward was another. He was on the roster this year. And it's kind of just, it kind of feels like their motto is if you can't beat them, buy them, right? Or <laughs> can't beat them, join them, whatever you want to call it. But there have been so many players that the Dodgers have employed that have been the reason that they haven't won more championships. And so now they're all, you know, all trying to help the Dodgers win. But they've yeah. also been the reason that they haven't won in the postseason. Yeah, I, th I really think this World Series is hilarious just with, with all the former Red Sox. I don't know why my camera is not focusing, um, but I, I, I was like trying to count it out. Um, Yankees side, you have Alex Verdugo, who is not a part of that 18 team. Um, mm -hmm. Let me go through, but Dodger side, you have um, motherfucker. Uh, Mookie Betts, of course. Kike Hernandez there. Um, right. Who else do yeah. we have here? Yeah, Brazier, Kelly, who's hurt. Um, oh, Brazier, they, yeah. Yeah, they were part of the 18 Red Sox. And they were they were big parts. I mean, Brazier had a great year. Kelly had a solid year that year. Betts, Michael you know, Kopech, former Red Sox as well. Yeah. Never, yeah. never was up with the Major League never team. Never made but. it to the roster. Yeah, the MLB team. But um, And as I said, David Price and Craig Kimbrell. Uh, Price was, well, he didn't actually play in 2020. He sat out, but he was part of you know, the Dodgers for a few years there and Kimbrel was part of the team in 22. So it's just been, I don't know. I don't know what to say. But I mean, part of it speaks to how much movement there is among players in sports. And part of it speaks to how much, how desperate the Dodgers are to win, that they will take these guys that have taken them down in the past. And uh, now we're hearing rumors about the Dodgers joining the Juan Soto. Um, oh. The Juan Soto. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Well, I don't think the Juan Soto are, sweepstakes. Yeah, those aren't surprising at all. And I think, you know, uh, if people didn't realize that baseball is a problem after, you know, getting Otani and Hernandez and Glasnow and Yamamoto, I think they might start to realize that if the Dodgers end up getting Juan Soto, I pray that doesn't happen. I think that would be, just be terrible for the game. I mean, I don't, I, I, I'm just the traditionalist wanting to see competitive balance. But um, truth is, there's only a few teams that can afford them. Yeah, they would have a seven hundred million dollar contract with Soto deferred until twenty sixty five. I would Something say, like um, yeah. just to be able to to avoid the luxury tax, um, <laughs> just insane. Um, but I, I'm going to call it right now on this show at this very moment. I could look very stupid. Congratulations to the Los Angeles Dodgers on winning the twenty twenty four World Series. Let's clap it up for them. Good job. Um, finally got over the hump. Finally, after years and years and of just failure. Um, but yeah, call my shot. Well, they've, they've been relentless with their spending and they, they finally spent enough. I think they, they finally kind of got there and, um, and they may get there again next year with Otani pitching and maybe yeah. even Juan Soto. It's a, scary to think about. Let's not, let's not worry about it yet until we have to. But um, I think Otani, I mean, I think that was inevitable. He wanted to be there in 2018. He would have been there if they National League had the DH at the time. There was no doubt about that. And there was no doubt in my mind that's where he was going. I think the whole, you know, the red herring of him going to Toronto was total BS. And uh, it was a nice little, you know, fantasy. But he wanted to be in Cal Southern California and he wanted to play for a winner. And so that narrowed it down to one team, basically. I mean, he could, you know, could have chosen the Padres, but that wasn't happening. So... One more, I guess it's talked about now, but I think it has been a little bit on the back burner. The Dave Roberts and Aaron Boone little rivalry we got going on. They do not like each other. Um, from their days at UCLA and I think uh, Cal, right? I think Boone played at Cal. Um, mm -hmm. They have not liked each other. Now, Boone was not on that 2004 Yankee team that lost to Dave Roberts on the steal, but um, just a great little added rivalry. I think it just adds some juice to this because really – one, one, one versus one. We haven't seen that since 2013, and it just doesn't have as much juice as 2013, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, even then, I think we saw it in in 2020. But I mean, again, yeah. people don't count that. And of course, Boone uh, was on the 03 uh, Yankees who beat the Red Sox the yeah. year before. But then his injury playing basketball is what opened the door for them to get a Rod in 2004. <laughs> so. Um, you know, Roberts, I, I, you know, he's been there since 2016 and his teams have always won. So credit to him. But he's uh, he's a little feistier. And I find that I, I don't I mean, 
you know, baseball managers, I, I get why NFL coaches get fired up. I get why a baseball manager would too. You want to win, but he seems like he enjoys kind of getting his name out there. This whole thing with the Padres and calling them villains. He, he's yeah. kind of getting into the spirit and it's, and now it's starting to become a little irksome. Frankly, you know, I think when you look at who won the World Series last year, Bruce Bochy's won four rings. That guy is the opposite. He doesn't want any of the attention. He is kind of the silent assassin in the dugout. So easy to root for a guy like that. And what's ironic is he has literally the biggest head in baseball history. And he keeps yeah, his head very yes, small. Yes, he does. <laughs> the biggest hat size ever. Yeah. And it's, but, you know, Robert's ego is pretty close now. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, let's move to football. I think just this World Series, to me, it just doesn't have as much juice. It's, it's a bummer. Just not, it's overhyped, no... and it's two teams that no one outside of L.A. and New York, well, outside of their fan bases, really want to see. So, Yeah. Um, but let's move to football. So exciting, a very exciting week of football. It was a very weird week. Again, I think we've had a few weird weeks lately. Um, Thursday night football first. Um, Rams won a very controversial game. I didn't. I mean, it was face mask. Um, it sh absolutely should have been called. I, don't, I really don't know how that ref said, oh, I couldn't get a good look at it. I, you know, again, we're, we're looking at it from the couch. But there was a very clear look at it. He clearly, clearly grabbed his face mask. But does that win the game for the Vikings? Absolutely not. They had to go, even if you get the penalty, what did they have to go? 75 yards in a minute 36, minute 30 something. Um, yeah, something like that, and they'd have to get a two point conversion on top of that. So, and and they had only scored two touch, or they didn't score a touchdown after the first two drives of the game as well. So your right. momentum, offensive momentum, is already slow. Let's not let's not act like the Vikings were going to win that game. They absolutely got blown on that call, but they were not going to win that game. No, no, they're coming back to earth a little bit. I mean, they it's not like they've been destroyed the last two games. I mean, they played two solid teams. I think. Um, but you know, you start five and zero, oh, you're going to lose a couple games. Um, yeah. it's not, Darnold didn't play badly; numbers were pretty good. Mm -hmm. Stafford just played really, really well. Four touchdowns, yeah, two seventy nine, twenty five for thirty four. Great. They day. got Top of Nakua back. It's a totally different Rams team. Yeah, yeah they, you could just tell. Like the energy was just so different about that Rams team coming out of the gate. They were. He, it was like his toys are fixed. He's like, my toys went to the toy shop for a repair. Now they're fixed. I'm going to play with them all I can. Um, and he, he played with his toys a lot. Um, I don't know if that sounds bizarre. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's how I feel about it. the Dodgers. They bought so many toys and, you know, sometimes toys break. So the key is you got to have a lot of toys. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Bengals, Eagles, the Eagles just, they, they, listen, that's a statement win right there. That is a, that is a big win for Nick Sirianni. Um, I think his seat, while it's hot, I think he did drop it to boiling. This was a loser leaves town game. I love to describe him like that. Credit Barstool Big Cat for that. Um, but Joe Burrow has said he thinks they can win 10 games. I think he's going to have to win, what is it, three games. So you're yeah, going to have to win seven seven out of your last nine yeah. um, to end the season. This Bengals team, man, they, they love just teasing you. They love to tease their fans of, are we good? I don't know. We might not be. We might be. I don't know. Well, I don't. I, I I was surprised at this one, and the Bengals are zero and four at home now. The Eagles completely dominated, twenty seven to seven in the second half. Um, Hurts efficient again. Barkley, what a difference Saquon Barkley makes. Honestly, I mean, it, they they always ran the ball well with the guys they had, and then Hurts can run it, but that just gives them a totally different element. Um, I I think for all the sort of fuss about the Eagles, you know, they didn't really play anybody. They weren't that overwhelming. But look at the last couple of weeks. Yeah, the Giants are not that great, but they won road games by twenty five and twenty points. They're five and two, right? They play Jacksonville next in the Doug Peterson revenge game. I just feel like they are, you know, they are actually a little closer to the team that started ten and one last year than the one that finished one and five or whatever. So, um, and the Bengals just it their struggles to me highlight the weakness of the AFC and, and the, the, yeah, they were close to beating the chiefs. Everybody's been close to beating the chiefs, but they didn't do it. And, you know, look at their season and look at the tra trajectory of Kansas city season. And so yeah. I, I don't know if the Bengals are coming back from this. They clearly have a lot of defensive problems. Yeah. Um, and Zach Taylor is just not a good play caller. I mean, you, you look at this offense that they have and they, they have the pieces there. I mean, when you have Joe Burrow and Jamar chase and T Higgins, 
those are your pieces. Those are your, are your key pieces to succeed. And they just haven't been able to succeed. Um, I don't love, I don't, I don't love talking about another man's job. Um, I know some people take offense to that, but I mean, he's gotta be fired. It's, I think it's time. I think especially if you need a boost, because there, there are teams that are exactly like the Bengals in the past who've struggled, fired their coach, and they're very talented. And then they get a little bit of a boost. They get a little bit of an urgency because they just don't seem urgent. There's nothing, there's nothing urgent about Cincinnati. It feels like they're waiting to hit the gas and they just can't hit the gas. They just haven't been able to do that. Um, and I think firing Zach Taylor could be that because he has just been, he's been just not good. That, that, I think that's the best description. Just not good. He hasn't been horrendous, but he just hasn't been very good. Um, let's go to your game. Yeah. This is a tough one. Jameis Winston. I can't, I can't hold in my happiness. I'm sorry, Mike. Um, Jameis Winston, 334, three touchdowns, almost through the game ending interception as well. That was a career defining drive. I'm going to say it. Also, and people say, oh, it's not a career defining drive because he almost threw an interception. No, that's Jameis Winston. That defines his career, having horrible passes and still somehow finding ways to do it. 30 30, you know, interception touchdown here. That is a perfectly career defining drive. Um, I mean, this, and again, I think you described it perfectly. This is just a perfectly Ravens game. You just, you let them hang around. They were there. They were there. You're the fucking Ravens. You should be able to, you know, pull this one out. And the sun literally comes down and beats you down. Um, yeah. I, what, what's your, what's your reaction here? I think this is one of the worst secondaries the Ravens have had in a while. I think this is a real problem. I've been saying this all year. Um, Kyle Hamilton, who is a great player in their secondary, had a big dropped interception. Terrible pl uh, call early in the game by Harbaugh. He went for it on fourth and one. Could have taken the points. You know, right? Three points ends up being the difference because if they were down two late in the game, they kicked the field goal in the game. Um, they so and they just this is what I've been saying for years. They don't win close games like at all. I mean, last year, I think only three of their 13 wins were by one score or less. You saw what happened in the postseason. I mean, them getting behind seven, nothing to the Chiefs completely took a, a lot of the wind out of their sails. It just it just felt like they weren't built. They're just I don't know what it is. I don't know. They're so comfortable in these blowout games. They can really showcase but they have not shown me their ability to win close games, to, to grind out wins. Um, it, it, you know, even a couple of the games they've won, their offense has had to put the game away. The defense has let the opposition back. And, um, and I, I honestly, for the Browns, beside this being kind of a law of averages game in the, by, you know, in the NFL lexicon, I think Deshaun Watson going out absolutely. I mean, it goes without saying the best thing that could have happened to the Browns. I feel like that there had to be a weight lifted off their shoulders because it can't, it's, it's hard to bench a guy making that kind of money. And I don't know how he's perceived in the clubhouse. I know how he's perceived by the public, obviously, but you know, in the, in the locker room, did the guys may like, him, they may not, but um, him going, it just felt like the entire outlook of the Browns season was going to change at least for that one, for, for this one game. It, Feels like it, it felt like um, John Harbaugh had finally said, yes, we're going to run the football. We're going to commit to Derrick Henry. 11 carries today. <laughs> and the game was never or on Sunday. The game was never out of reach. It was never in a position where it was like, OK, we have to start throwing the football. The biggest deficit they had was a. What was it? I mean, three, right? Four. Am I wrong? They about that? Four at one point. I, I'm four? trying to remember. Oh, yeah, oh the right. five, the five point deficit at the end of the oh, game right. when you're they right. were coming yeah, back. Yeah, they were up four at one point. And then... It had been a one score game all game. There uh -huh. was like no, there's no need to get to get freaked out and start throwing every single play. Why is he not having twenty carrots? I mean, that's crazy to me. Well, didn't he have that quote that we didn't sign him to have 20 carries a game, but yet he's putting up six or seven yards a carry and he's Derrick Henry. He's still play The fact that he's still playing, you know, this long at a time he's 30 years old, um, you know, it, it for, throw that stuff out the window. Frank Gore was running well late until his late 30s. It, like you signed him to win now. Your window yeah. is now. Don't worry about, well, we want to manage his workload because in a year or two. No, no, no. 
Now, this is the time to do it. So that was frustrating. They called direct snap to him on fourth and one. So it's bad enough they don't take the points. It's worse that they make that kind of play call. I, I'm really tired of Harbaugh do, you know, following the analytics. Oh, but if we stop them, at least they're pinned deep. Well, then they go down and they get points off that drive, I think. So it's just they don't – I don't know what it is. I, it's just a discombobulation between – coach and play i don't know i don't know what it is it's very frustrating um look they'd won five in a row so it's not like okay and you can't lose a game and they, they hurt themselves with the own two start but it just you're very right you said it at the very beginning this was a very ravens game to lose i don't know if i could say it any better <laughs> yeah um and especially you know obviously you said they won five in a row or five five of six or whatever this is not a game you can lose i'm sorry like i you know, right. These get right. this is a Super Bowl. This is a Super Bowl team. This is a divisional game against an opponent whose starting quarterback just went down. Now, if you want to have the debate, Jameis was better than Deshaun. He absolutely was. He definitely made that team better. But this is still a two and six Browns team who is coming off a quarterback injury. They are just I mean, the locker room is it feels like they are Eeyore. Like they they have a massive cloud over the stadium and you lose on the road in Cleveland. That's just not a game you should be losing. I'm sorry. Lose lose a game to the NFC, which I know Lamar just doesn't lose to the NFC. But any anything else but a division game. Those are the most important games to win. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's just a big one. You, you could be looking back at this one in January and saying, fuck, man, Kansas City, you know, we could have gained some ground on Kansas City early, but we didn't. And this could be the one right here. So frustrating. I, I you know, I feel your pain. Michael, I really yeah. do. Um, but let's go to Titans Lions. Hilarious, bad. Yeah. Um, the only thing I have to say about this game is in relation to the Lions. Dan Campbell was at the podium today and he was literally jumping up and down when he was talking about the trade deadline. He said they have something big in the works. Um, so mm. I'm assuming some sort of big you know, acquisition. It's not gonna be Hassan Reddick, I would assume, because he did sign his contract, but I mean, I'm sure there's a few other guys out there. Max Crosby is available. You know, he wants to be a Raider for life, but I don't know if he's going to be a Raider for life. Mm, I, yeah, I don't know who it's going to be, but I know that the Lions right now are getting seemingly stronger every week. But the Titans are also really bad. I was surprised it was only an 11 and a half spread. Could have been 37 and a half they would have covered. This game was close. I'll say that. this was It was close early, and yeah. I was like, oh, it's, you know, we're going to have a little bit of a game like Tennessee, you know, they played Buffalo close to start the game last week and then Buffalo, you know, took off. But it just, yeah, they did the exact uh, same I, thing. If I told you that Jared Goff was going to throw for 85 yards, the Lions were going to have 17 first downs compared to 23 for the Titans. Get out gain 416 to 225. That's got to be a record. They were out gained by almost 200 yards and put up 52 points i mean it's insane and it's not like they had you know like three return touchdowns they only had uh one i think right they had a they had a punt return or am i making that yeah they had a rain uh, that? so that's yeah. it so it, they had an, a, an absurd amount you know turnovers short fields um i think tennessee turned it over four times so just wild on the stat sheet it's not even like the lions had that amazing of a day statistically they just capitalized on every opportunity they got which is what good teams do you know that's what the yeah. chiefs do Lions are doing that. They're so they've scored ninety nine points their last two games. Or did I miss a game in between? No, they had a game against the Vikings. But add that one in, they've got I think one thirty over the last three games. What did they score then? They scored thirty. Ninety nine, thirty one, and now and now I'm sorry, uh, ninety. Yeah, yeah, I've been say forty seven, thirty one, and fifty two. Yes, one hundred and thirty points the last three weeks. Jesus. Yeah, they're a wagon. Cards, Dolphins. Uh, I didn't really want to have the discussion on Tua on this show. It's just, it, it's such a tired, tired discussion to have. The guy's going to do what he wants and no one else is going to stop him unless the NFL steps in. And that's, that's all I can say. That's all I can really say about it. Um, but Chad Ryland is the hero again, back to back weeks with a walk off field goal. Good for him. I'm, I'm, you know, I love seeing kickers do good. Um, but besides that, this Dolphins team, I mean, there's just nothing. Nothing else you can really say um, about that. And, and you know, the Cardinals are going to lose next week because they haven't won two games in a row in like two years. <laughs> yeah, but they're four and four and they're actually in the hunt for the division. And Murray put up good numbers and uh, 200 yard receivers 
McBride and Harrison. Um, Miami wastes a pretty good offensive effort, at least by their standards this year. Yeah, I, I would just say good for Arizona. They're very quietly uh, having themselves a, a nice season. And remember, they finished last year strong, actually. I know they were 5-12, and 12, I think, but they uh, they have... They won a yeah, few big bounced. ones. Yeah. But, yeah, and, and they bounced back from a 10-point early deficit in this one. So, yeah, they're, they're showing a little, uh, you, as you like to say, they're feisty. Yeah. Um, and the Dolphins, I mean, this was like, if you wanted to get your season back on track, yeah. this was a really big spot to do it, and you wasted it. I mean, I think... You have five losses right now. You're going to have to go on a, what was it, like 24 or 20, like 17 Chiefs run or something when they started 0-5 and and then won 11 straight to end the year. I think that was 17. 2021 Dolphins, but I think they were like 1-7 and and finished 9-8. and Oh, yeah. that Was was that to his first year where he flipped with Fitzpatrick? I think it was second year. Second year. I think. Um, I I could be wrong. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Well, they could do it. Um not likely though. Uh, Jets Patriots. This is a disaster. It is a disaster in New York, and my pearly whites are just shining. Um, I love seeing it. I love seeing this. Um, it's not even Aaron Rodgers. I, I really could care less about Aaron Rodgers. It's the organization. I, I just can't stand the Jets organization. They have ruined career. I mean, look at Sam Darnold. Like, even if he's come back to earth, guess what? He's five and two right now, and the New York Jets are two and six with Aaron Rodgers. It's hilarious. Makes me laugh. Um, I feel for the players. Honestly, I do. I mean, imagine like going into this year, you're like, finally, we're going to have a healthy Aaron Rodgers um, and you're two and six. Uh, but those lingering curses with with the Jets, they just, it still lingers with New England, right? Like you just didn't expect New England to win this game. I think New York was like a seven point favorite and, uh, you know, they lose outright. So, uh, but go Pats, I guess. And, and Brissett. Brissett uh, gets it done in relief of uh, an injured Drake May. I just, I, I I'm not gonna lie. I love seeing this happen to the Jets and Rogers. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just getting better by the week. Um, they play in prime time on a short week now against Houston. Um, yeah, they'll probably win that game for no reason, just because seemingly can't get any worse. But uh, who they, knows? they also have Indy. They have Indy on uh, mo- Sunday night, Monday night football. That's in a getting few weeks. flexed. I. I be shocked if it doesn't get flexed to Ravens, Steelers, or Packers, Bears. I was looking at unless that. Joe Flacco comes in. Give me, give me Joe Flacco revenge game versus the Jets. Yeah. Give that to me. Um, but yeah, there's nothing else to talk about with this game. Uh, Falcons, Bucks, Creamsicles. The Bucks have won one game in the Creamsicles. They are channeling the '70s, '80s Bucks Is that, was in that every back single in nine. They won that game. They beat Green Bay. They won. That was like the first time I think they wore the Creamsicles with Josh Freeman. I remember they were Owen. Josh Freeman. Yeah. Oh, Colts yeah, no, legend. Colt legend. No, no um, Josh Freeman. They beat Rodgers. That was the year before the Packers won the Super Bowl. And uh, it was big upset. I don't know. You just said the cream school, so it made me think of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this was, I mean, this was a massive game for the NFC South. I don't think it's as impactful as, as we really think it's going to be because, I mean, Atlanta isn't consistent. They, we haven't seen consistency out of them. We haven't seen consistency out of the Bucks. And I know Atlanta essentially holds a two-game lead over the division, but it's still too early to really worry about that. Um, So I'm not really – I don't really think this is going to tell us who's going to win the South. I think the last five weeks of the year is going to tell us, you know, who's going to really win the South. Maybe that sounds like a stupid stupid take because, of course, the last five weeks of the year really determines a lot of divisions. But um, Kirk, four touchdowns. Mayfield – I mean, Mayfield's still a good statistical day. They threw it 50 times. That's a little crazy. Um, they weren't down by that much, I think. Let me look at the, yeah, let me look at the play-by-play. But I, I, you know, I was watching in our red zone. I was trying to pay attention, and they were never really down that big. So fifty times seems feels like a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it just also the Bucks receiver situation. Um, you know, they it's just going to hurt them, and they're playing the Chiefs next week with. Without Evans, without Godwin, um, I mean, I'm just impressed with Kirk Cousins. I'm impressed that the Falcons are three and zero on the road, and um, and that they've got themselves in first place, and they're in a good spot because now they've swept Tampa Bay, so it's like a two game lead really in the yeah. South, and these teams don't face each other again. But um, they had Atlanta, they hung on. I mean, they they were up what thirty one seventeen at one point, and yeah, they were down two scores, you know, kind of late. So I, I guess I could see the fifty. 50- 
50 passes because of late, but um, yeah. Yeah, Cousins are very and, efficient. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's all you really want out of him is, is a, you don't need a superstar, right? Like, I think that is, that gets a little lost with this Falcons team. Like, you have enough weapons around you. You just need to use them right. And we didn't see that with Arthur Smith for the past, what, two years? Um, he did not know how to use those weapons. But, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm rooting for the Falcons. I want to see the Falcons do it. I mean, they are just a tortured organization. Um, I, I know Arthur, Bre Arthur Blank. I'm going to make a political joke here. He came out um, in support of Kamala Harris. And someone said, yeah, the guy that blows leads. <laughs> you mm -hmm. want him supporting your, your politician. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Um, but I, I want the Falcons to succeed. You know, they've, they've just been so tortured. It's been a torture chamber for Falcons fans. So hopefully they can at least, like, I don't know, go to the NFC title game this year, make a little run. That would be fun. Yeah. Because you have a couple years left. Um, Packers, Jaguars. Um, Brandon McManus also back-to-back -back weeks with a walk-off field goal. And... I mean, is it time to get rid of Doug Peterson? I think I think we're a little bit in that like Bengals territory here because you look at the Jags and it's like okay, like they're not a two and six football team. This is not a two and six team talent wise, but somehow they're two and six. They need a little bit of a spark. Um, they got a spark when when Herbert Meyer got fired and they played the Colts. You know, took us down week eighteen. Um, and Malik Willis continues his torment of the AFC South. That is the funniest storyline from this season, that Malik Willis is 3-0 versus the AFC South. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would say that the Jags are underperforming, and it's hard to justify a coach keeping his job when a team is underperforming. Lawrence played better. But, um, but the Packers, you know, 6-2, and two, and they've done it with love in and out of the lineup. Um, they're kind of just, like I said, quietly succeeding, which is good for them. They don't, you know, they're not getting a ton of attention. I, I don't know what the Jags have to do. I, 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 you know, I'm not the person to tell them how they should run their franchise, but it just seems like whatever it is, is not working. And the mojo is not good. And again, usually a coaching change can probably be the best thing to shake that up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, this was supposed to be the greatest Jags team of all time, according to Shot Khan. And right. That's not what's going on. Um, not even close. I, I think this is a perfect situation for the Jags to go on a late, like a deep playoff run. Because they are, again, they're doing this quietly. <clears throat> and you're going to have teams overlooking them uh, late in the year, and especially going into the playoffs. You could very well see. I, I, would, I wouldn't be shocked if Green Bay goes to the NFC title game especially once the love gets fully healthy and, you know, they kind of give get everyone back, get everyone healthy. You could see that. Um, I don't want to talk about this game. I really don't. Colts, Texans. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> you, you, you go. I, I'll let you just take this one. I was – what's funnier? What is funnier, honestly? Um, Anthony Richardson checking himself out of the game because he was tired – or him throwing that interception late in the second half after literally only completing two passes in the first half of the game. He was two of 15 in the first half. That's not a joke set. That's not a hyperbole. That's what happened. Two of 15 for a 69-yard touchdown and an interception. Um, that ended up also being the difference for, for the game. Um, Again, I noticed a theme, if, though, because Josh Allen had a horrid game, and that was also against the Texans. He was like 9 for 30 or something. That's so true. He um, could have something to do with it. I will say he, he figured it out a little bit more in the second half. Um, I do think he was better. I, I think he came out and came back. And, again, he put us in a position to win the game. Um, but I think what this Colt – if you want to really develop him as a quarterback, you can't go to Joe Flacco. Now, Shane Steichen said they're evaluating all options. Um, in his press conference today in the lead up to the Sunday night game against Minnesota. That tells me that Joe is, it's, a, it's probably going to be a coin flip. I think so. Th there's a lot of different stuff that has happened as a Colts fan on get up this morning. They were discussing Anthony Richardson leaving the game. Um, Rex Ryan said that Shane Steichen is not the decision maker when it comes to who plays at quarterback that Chris Ballard has been telling Shane Steichen 
you have to play Anthony Richardson, no matter what. Wouldn't shock me because Shane Steichen has caught, made some play calls that are less than safe for Richardson. Maybe he's trying to get to Flacco. I don't know. Um, maybe we're, <laughs> we're not in a Deshaun Watson situation, of course. It's, it's not close. But maybe we're in a little bit of a petty, like, hey, you know, you want to see him do his thing? I'm going to show you his thing right now. Um, he's just not ready at the moment. Um, and again, there's the debate on whether he should play, whether it's better for him to sit, whether it's better for his confidence to sit and not be really bad or, you know, have him sit, learn some more, build his confidence by, you know, getting his hype train up again. I don't know what the right answer is. I, I know what the answer is, um, is that he's just not good right now. That's, that's the answer. And if you care about winning football games, it's not Anthony Richardson at starting quarterback. That's yeah. it's it's it is a fact of life. It's I'm not trying to be an asshole. Um, I'm not like armchair quarterbacking here because, you know, he's a much bigger man than me. He's much faster. He's throws the ball fucking probably 40 yards further than I can 30 yards further. Um, but he's just not the answer. And if you care, if you don't care about winning football games, then kind of say it. I, I would rather them say, you know what, we're focused on developing this guy as a quarterback, as a passer. And that means you got to commit to running the football more. I mean, you, I, I'm going to look at the box score here, but there were a lot of times I, I felt like they should have been running the ball, especially on his late interception. It was third and three. You had about, you know, 20-something uh, seconds left, 30 seconds left. Let, let me look at what the time, what the time said. You had two timeouts. Um, yeah, 23 seconds left. You had two timeouts to go. It was third and three. You're so deep in your own territory. You're on the Indy 12. It's perfectly fine to run it with Taylor and say, you know what? We're going to see how many we can get. Because I guarantee you he's getting at least three. He, he, was, he was running the ball really well on Sunday. Um, he was at 5.3 yards per carry, hit over 100, carried the ball 20 times. I would have loved to see more out of him. You know, Richardson was 10 of 32 on the day. Just really just not good. It, it's just, it's not good. If you're worried about developing a quarterback, then you keep him in and you say, we're, we're keeping him in. We're not worried about wins and losses right now. I think Chris Ballard is under a lot of pressure from Jim Irsay to win football games. I don't think Irsay, I think Irsay might be meddling a little bit too much. I think Chris Ballard might be meddling a little too much. GM should be letting the coach make the personnel decisions on game day. That's just, yeah. you. it's not a fair, you're not giving your coach a fair chance. And, you know, I don't think I'd ever see the day where I'm defending Shane Steichen, but here I am. If this is true, you're putting your coach in a bad position. That's it. It's it's a tough position for him. So um, this was just a tough loss, and somehow we're four and four. We're two, really three games back at Houston. Um, I think I would like to see Flacco. I, I would like to see Richardson in the first half. If Richardson struggles, you pull him. You say, listen, we want you to sit. We want you to, you know, just – minimize the damage as much as you can and put Joe in, you know, let him close it out. See if you can win some games. So Richardson can be playing meaningful games down the stretch. So he can have that. Okay. There's actually pressure on me to perform here. And, and we're in a playoff hunt. You want that pressure on him. You want him to experience that. And, you know, again, there's no, I don't think there's a right answer here. I really don't. I, I, as much as I say, so like, as much as I hope we win, I don't think there's a right answer. Um, and, but at the end of the day, I just want the Colts to win. And they didn't win, so I'm sad. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Uh, yeah. I don't, Joe Mixon is a fucking monster, too. I don't know how the NFL world let him go to the Texans because he is just a absolute monster. Yeah. I'm I didn't know if you had anything on the game. No, disappointing loss, I know, for the Colts. It was a big bounce back, too, for the Texans. They really they kind of needed that. They're 4-0 at home, and they have – pretty much a stranglehold on the division. So they can kind of pace themselves a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely, you can definitely kind of, you know, maybe if you want to sit a few guys, rest a few guys, like that Nico Collins injury is suddenly a lot less impactful, I think, mm -hmm. because of how, you know, far ahead, like you're going to have a locked in spot. All you care about is seeding at that point. Of course, seeding is important, but getting into the playoffs, that's the most important thing. Um, yeah. So you know, good on the Texans. Maybe they'll represent the AFC South well in the playoffs. Um, Saints Chargers. I don't even did these two played football. I'll say that they played football in LA. That happened. Um, the Saints did not score a touchdown. 
No, they were up two nothing at one point. My my uh, uncle was at the game. He told me it was just brutal to watch um, at the Big Apple Store. Yeah, I mean Chargers. They it, you point this out, and you know they haven't had a super tough schedule, although they have played the Chiefs. But they, I believe, I'm checking this. They've allowed the fewest points in football by actually a, a decent margin. They've given up 91 points in seven wow. games, uh, less than even Pittsburgh at 101. So you know. Scoring defense for the Chargers has been really, really good. If they get some offensive production, again, we really haven't seen them play too much in terms of stiff competition. They have beat Denver, and they have uh, they did hold the Chiefs to 17 at home, which, you know, I know the Chiefs aren't as explosive this year, but that's still it's still worth watching. And the Saints just they had a two and zero start, and now they're what two and six, and they're they played they're down to like they're basically fourth string quarterback. So it's just sad. Yeah, not much else to say in this game. Just Chargers did what they had to do. Uh, and I think I saw, I did see a graphic with the projections for uh, cap, you know, for next year. And uh, the Saints are still bottom of the league, negative 80 something. And they just gave Alvin Kamara a brand new contract. Um, I, what do you even do with the Saints? Do you just like nuke them, just nuke the team and, and completely restart? I think that's the way to do it. Maybe um, the Angels, let- they, were, they were horrible in the 80s. I mean, so there were bags over their heads in New Orleans and, they got their championship. They had their great days with Breeze, but this has been pretty bad. I think we're back to the Aints. I, I think we got to call them the yeah. Aints again. It's it's time. Um, Bills, Seahawks. A I listen. I thought the the Seahawks were going to come out, make a statement, win. Um, didn't happen. Buffalo. This was a. I think this was a really really confidence building win. You're going across the country into Seattle, which is a notoriously difficult place to play. Um, and I mean, you bull rush these guys, you, you absolutely just make them, make them look like an average at best football team. Um, and I mean, these Seahawks are four and four, so that is the definition of average, but, Mm -hmm. um, good. I mean, the bills that, that just a much needed win. I don't think there's much else to say about it. Yeah. I mean, Seattle still tied for first, I guess. And that's the good news for them. Uh, they're four and four with the two other teams, but yeah, Buffalo, I mean, they, that, pretty bad two game uh, losing streak, but they also own the second best point differential in the NFL and the best in the AFC at plus 84. If you believe in that kind of thing, again, I mean, it's all for them. It's just going to come down to the postseason. They can look as sexy as they want in the regular season. They have a complete strangle. They're three and a half games up on Miami in the AFC East. I mean, there's no question they're winning the division. So maybe like Houston, they can actually prioritize trying to get guys healthy and not, you know, not wearing guys down. Um, but yeah, and, and uh, disappointing for Seattle because they had a great effort against Atlanta. They come back home and they get flattened by three touchdowns. Not really sure what to make of the Seahawks this year. Perfectly balanced att- offensive attack from the Bills on Sunday. 34 pass attempts, 34 rush attempts. I like it. Love seeing that. Um, Panthers, Broncos. Uh, Bryce Young had to play because Andy Dalton was in a car accident. Um, I hope Andy's okay. Can't have the red rifle, you know, down for too long. Can't keep him down. Um, I think it's an accomplishment that the Panthers scored 14 points and had a lead. They had a seven point lead at one point. So, um, give them the trophy, clap it up for, for the, uh, the Panthers. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, Sean Payton, not, uh, he was running up the score a little bit. J.C. Horn wasn't happy. Um, Sean coached his dad in New Orleans. So, um, yeah, I mean, Denver's, you know, we forget Denver was 0-2. They won five out of six, and they play the Ravens next week, which suddenly is a, a better game than it looked on paper. And, you know, that so, that again, it's just these teams doing what they have to do, beating the teams they're supposed to beat. It wasn't the prettiest thing that Broncos will ever put out there, but um, efficient good defense. And, uh, and yeah, I think any Broncos fan would have taken a winning record through eight games. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we were, we were thinking like top five pick yeah. for, for Denver, I think. And they just, they're, they're finding ways to win. That's what a good team does. And as much as I hate to say it, that's what a good coach does. Yeah. I was just going to say <laughs> um, not, not a huge Sean Payton fan anymore, but, um, that he's got him going in the right direction. Absolutely. Um, Chiefs Raiders. Uh, the Chiefs just, again, they just keep finding ways to win. They are, they do it ugly, but 
that's what good teams do. And D Hop wasn't a big impact, but that was, you know, that's a big addition for them. Um, I think you're going to see an uptick in the next few weeks. But again, they're just finding ways to win and they're still undefeated. I mean, they held the Raiders to 21 carries for 33 yards. They came up with a huge play, sack and Minshew on fourth down. Of course, the Raiders went for it on fourth down when they could have yeah. made it a one score game or a one point game. Um, the defense, just unbelievable how good the Chiefs defense has gotten here over the last few years. Mahomes is the one pick on a, on, I think it was on a batted ball. And um, I mean, Kelsey's. 10 for 90, so he's getting in the act. I mean, they're just going to keep getting better. I mean, that's the thing. They, yeah. they also traded for Josh Uche today. Is that the guy's name? They, they made the trade for him. And um, so they're they're continuing to bolster. I think he's supposed to help replace Mike Dana, who's been hurt. They, uh, they make every play they need to make at critical junctures in the game. And that's... That's all that matters. doesn't matter if the offensive production is not as great or defense has a bad day. They just, like you said, they find ways. And I don't know who's going to beat them, in, at least in the AFC right now. I, I don't yeah. see it. I don't see any team being as good as they are. Yeah, and again, it's it's not pretty. Like It's not pretty, but they – and no one's going to think of them as the favorite. I still think they're the favorite. I People have been saying the Lions. People – or just in the NFL, people have been saying the Lions. They've been saying the Ravens. I just still think it's the Chiefs. They have to prove me otherwise. Right, exactly. And they haven't lost. They just haven't lost. So It's Chiefs um, until, right, innocent until proven guilty. It's Chiefs until proven guilty. I don't know. Um, <laughs> proven yeah. mid. Um, <laughs> Bears, Commanders, the ending of the year. I'm not going to say game of the year because this one stunk. I had the over. I was just so mm. ticked off about the over not hitting. Um, I was still like at the end of the game, I was doing math of like, okay, if, you know, the commanders go down and kick a field goal to tie it, then they both kick trade field goals in overtime. And then, you know, then you have a touchdown and for some reason they go for two on the touchdown. It made no sense, but I was still mathematically able to get the two point con uh, the over, but um, Caleb Williams drives him down, scores late. And then the Hail Mary um, just insane, absolutely insane ending. Um, and I hope that's there's more to come from this Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams matchup. Yeah, um, but the commander's defense, again, was was pretty good. I mean, they're not they on sneaky the sneaky are getting very good. Yeah, I mean, their rush defense didn't have a good game, but they stifled Caleb Williams, um, picked up a couple sacks, held him to 131 yards. Yeah, they were, you know, it's still, even with the crazy ending, it's still the definition of winning ugly, which, again, for mm -hmm. a young team, I mean – they're six and two. I mean, it's crazy. They were not just bad last year. I think they won four games. I mean, they were pitiful last year. So it's not like they were, you know, they got a little better, you know, six and 11. And then they make the, I mean, they were worst defense in football by like a mile last year, if I recall. Yeah. And so Dan Quinn, definitely the favorite right now for coach of the year. I think he's leapfrog O'Connell. Um, I, I, I love it. I'm happy for the commanders and, you know, uh, dislike him still football in the state of Maryland. So um, just an incredible play. And how about the karma of that guy, Stevenson getting uh, taunting the fans as yes. that play is going on. I mean, one thing you do it before two seconds before the snap and then you're locked back in. Uh, that was, that's a bad look. And that's a bad look for uh, Eberflus as the coach to have your get guys ready to eat. learn Chinese, buddy. You're, you're headed over to China for that one. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's just really not a good look, especially especially for the Bears. Like, you already have all this Caleb Williams, you know, people don't like that he paints his nails. People don't like how he's so cocky. Last year they had, what did they have? Someone steal, like, $100,000 worth of their, feet, like, maintenance equipment. Like, it's just... Like, it's, it's just the Bears. Like, that's another, like, Bears thing. And it's funny because Keenan Allen, of course, was, you know, he's on the Bears. And he was just nodding his head because that's, like, a very Charger thing to have. Yeah. Like, that is, like, the quintessential Chargers loss right there. And he's like, yeah, I've experienced this my entire career. It's nothing new. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. Um, but, yeah, I don't I mean, there's not much to take from this game because – the, the teams weren't very good. Like the whole game wasn't very good until the very end, the last, you know, minute and two minutes of the, the final drive. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I just can't really take much from this win or loss because Hail Marys, I mean, that's such a low percentage. That's just luck, pure luck. 
Um, yeah. But while I was watching it at a buddy's house and everyone was getting up ready to leave. And we were like, all right, we'll stay for the final play. We'll see what happens. And we just went, we were, we were there another 20 minutes. Like, oh my God, what that that's insane. It was very cool to watch live. I'll remember that probably forever. Um, and then the Sunday night football game. So I, uh, nobody cares about your fantasy football team, but I was down a bunch going into this. I had, the, or I was going against the Cowboys defense in our league. They had negative 15 points at the end of the game. I had won the game by one point. Like it was so close. Mm. And then that some sort of stack correction came in. They, uh, they attributed an extra sack to the Dallas defense. And that brought it up. I lost by half a point. I woke up this morning like, oh, my God, this is like this is a tragedy. This is horrible. Um, But the Cowboys are not good. They are not a good football team right now. This has been a just horrible week for Cowboys, for the Cowboys, for the team, for the fans. And it just gets worse with a loss that I mean, it was 20, 30 to 24. But this game was out of reach. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, the Dallas was actually looking okay early, but they hadn't lost on the road, so you figured that was probably going to happen. They're, you're right. They're not good. They're not good offensively. This isn't Ezekiel Elliott of seven, eight years ago. This is, you know, CeeDee Lamb put up good numbers, but that's it. Nobody else really stepped up. And uh, 49ers, one week they look terrible, but, you know, now they have Kittle going. and um, Kittle yeah, 500th 49ers reception as well, 500th career 49ers reception. Um, that is along the likes of Jerry Rice. Um, I wish I had the other list up. I saw there was a list on Sunday Night Football and I completely forgot. T.O. is in that list. So really yeah. good company, basically. He's in very good company. The only tight end on that list, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and still the favorite to win the NFC West, in my opinion. Really? They're, they're still your favorite? Because... You know, they've just been they're they're inconsistent too. I mean, they're they're just like Seattle. I, I think it's kind of fifty fifty right now. Could be the Rams too. Could, could even be. I don't know. It's open. It is open. I I don't know. I just I feel like if they get more guys back, I I, I don't know. They'll be there to waste the playoff spot. Don't worry. <laughs> um, and then I will uh, record a quick recap of Monday Night Football after this. Um. But yeah, Giants, Steelers, Russ. We'll we'll do a little a small small preview. Um, I don't know. There's nothing to preview about this game. I just hope Russ succeeds. I hope he looks good. Yeah, I mean, he, Steelers again, good defense. They're playing a team that doesn't score a lot of points. You'd think they'd be able to really stifle them. Um, doesn't always work that way. But yeah. uh, Pittsburgh and they have a chance of moving to first place in the North. So um, can't you know? Can the Giants do anything offensively? That's my question tonight. Can they? They got three against Philly. They're facing the second best scoring defense in the NFL right now. Can they? I mean, they, do they have to score on defense or special teams to win this game? That's, that's the other question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, let's go to uh, Week Nine. Um, yeah. Texans, yeah. Jets. Jets are actually a one point favorite in this game. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, I was gonna say I gotta jump in a sec, but yeah, we yeah. go through them real quick. Um, I I'm gonna say for no reason the uh, the Jets just because it's fun to be wrong. I think that one point spread scares me a little bit for the Jets. I'm going Houston there. Um, Cowboys Falcons in Atlanta. Atlanta, I think the Cowboys yeah. are like you said a bad team. Atlanta's got some mojo. Give me the Falcons. Absolutely. Dolphins, Bills in Buffalo. Buffalo is a six and a half point favorite. Um, I, I'll take Buffalo, uh, but I don't know. I got some division game, but they always beat the Dolphins. So I, I may take, actually, I'm going to take Miami with the points. I don't know why. I'm just going to take Miami with the points. All right. I'm going Buffalo. I think they're just going to kick the shit out of them. I, I think this, I think that loss to Arizona just took the air out of the, any air left in the tires that they had. Um, Raiders, Bengals, and Cincy. Cincy, they are eight point underdogs. Or eight point favorites, I'm sorry. Eight point favorites. Eight is a lot. Um, I think they'll probably win, but I would take the Raiders to cover. I'm going to take this is a home game. I'm going to take the Raiders. This is my upset of the week. I'm going to take the Raiders to win. I think Bengals will be 0 5 at home. All right. They are not. I think this is a game Zach Taylor gets fired in. I'm, I'm taking Bengals or Raiders to win. Um, Chargers, Browns, Chargers are two and a half point road favorites. 
Uh, I'm going to take the Browns. Yeah, I'm going with Jameis. Give me Jameis. Love, love the Jameis bump. Um, Pats, Titans in Tennessee. Pats. Carry that momentum. Titans are horrible. I don't think they can carry momentum. I'm going to go with the Titans just because it makes sense. Both teams will be two and seven by the end of the week. That just makes sense to me. Mm. Um, is that right? Eh, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Commanders, Giants, uh, Washington, they're three and a half point favorites in New York. Let's see. Uh, I, I like the Commanders. Give me Washington by a field goal. Mm. I, think, I think New York will cover that short spread. Um, Saints Panthers in Carolina, New Orleans, seven point favorites. Yeah, uh, Carolina. Yeah, give me Carolina, baby. Give me Andy Dalton. Give it, give it to me. Uh, Mile High Miracle rematch. Um, Broncos Ravens, Baltimore, nine and a half points. That's way too many points. Yeah, I'll take Denver. Yeah, give me Denver plus nine and a half. Ravens overall. Uh, Jags Eagles in Philly. Doug Peterson Bowl. Mm, seven and a half. Uh, Sirianni takes his frustration out. I'll go Philly. <laughs> yeah, I'll go Philly too. I don't see the Jags winning any, beating any somewhat good teams. Um, Bears, Cardinals, Arizona is actually a one point favorite at home. I like Arizona. I'm going to go Bears here. I think they're going to come back after that loss. Pretty deflating. Um, Lions Packers big game. I I don't think Jordan Love is going to play. I think that's going to sideline him for a while. Mm, this Detroit is, is also one. three and a half point favorite. Yeah, uh, this, this is tough. I I I I'm going to take Detroit, but I'm not super confident, especially with that three and a half. But I just feel like if Malik Willis is playing, the Lions offense has been going so well. I'll take the Lions. Yeah, I'll roll with the Lions. Too. It's hard to pick against them right now, and especially if they add someone at the deadline, because I think the deadline is this week. Am I right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'll take the Lions. Rams, Seahawks. Um, I, I like the Rams to keep it rolling. Yeah, give me the Rams. That momentum is good. Uh, oh, man, Colts, Vikings on Sunday Night Football. Minnesota has opened at six-point favorites. I'm going to take Minnesota to bounce back. Um, unless it's Flacco, but uh, again, my tradition, I'm picking against the Colts. Uh, give me the Vikings. And finally, the Monday night game. Good Monday night game. Bucks, Chiefs, Kansas City, they're eight and a half point home favorites. That feels like a lot, even with this banged up Bucks team. Uh, I'm still taking the Chiefs. The Chiefs offense just doesn't, they don't score enough points to me, right? Like to be eight and a half point favorites. Like big home favorites, uh, I'm gonna take the Bucks with the points, but I'll take the Chiefs overall. Um, well, that's that's where we're gonna wrap it up. Um, thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out us on socials. Go check out DraftAmerica.com, and we will see you next week.